Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. Uh, she's actually sitting this one out. She's not feeling too well today, but uh, hopefully she'll be back later today or tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the situation with the American voice actor, the English voice actor of Ken Masters from the Street Fighter series, uh, Ruben Langdon. Uh, apparently, this was a drama a couple of years ago. I, I missed this. I, I missed all of this. Somehow I missed it. I don't know what happened. But apparently, he was fired from his role as Ken. My favorite fighter, by the way. Uh, fired from his role as Ken uh, because of his political beliefs and his uh, beliefs in uh, UFOs, I guess. That was that was what caused them to, to let him go. Now, it's weird. Uh, he was let go from Street Fighter. He didn't voice Ken in Street Fighter 6, I guess. But he's still voicing Dante in uh, Devil May Cry. So Capcom is still working with him. It's just, I guess, the people that are in charge of Street Fighter didn't want to work with him because of some Newsweek hit piece articles. And uh, we'll talk about this because we talk about how the media gets people canceled. And I think things are kind of, you know, swinging back now. I, I think if this had happened current year, he probably would not have gotten canceled, but this was uh, a couple of years ago. But apparently it's come out now that, yeah, this is uh, legit. This is actually what happened. Uh, I don't think he could comment on it at the time, but uh, Niche Gamer put an article up a couple of days ago, so I got to give a hat tip to them for sure. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about this because this interests me on, on so many levels. One, I'm a huge video game fan, retro gaming fan in particular, fighting game fan in particular, and Ken Masters is actually my favorite Street Fighter character. Uh, he's my main. I've been playing Ken since Street Fighter 2, right? So, you know, that immediately got my attention. Uh, also, we follow cancel culture and everything that's been going on with that in the media attacking people and getting them canceled. Uh, also, he's really into UFOs. He's into the paranormal, and uh, we are bringing DeRezzed back. Uh, it's our podcast, DeRezzed, and we're going to focus on all of these things, video games, pop culture, and phenomenon, uh, including uh, UFOs. So uh, it's it's pretty interesting. This hits all the things that I am I myself am personally interested in, but I didn't realize that you could get canceled for saying the milk toast things he said about Black Lives Matter, I think. Uh, he had some opinions on that, and also for being into UFOs. I think most people, current year, uh, are probably more open to the idea of UFOs than we were a couple of years ago, given everything that's been going on. The media coverage and the unexplained aerial phenomenon that we've seen and the Tic Tac UFO footage being released. And my personal opinion is that's nothing. <laughs> you have no freaking idea. But that is that is my personal opinion. Uh, so let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Uh, go out to Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, wherever you find finer podcasts, and you'll find ours as well. We have the Clownfish TV Audio Edition. We have the Clownfish TV Gaming News under 10 minutes. And, of course, we're bringing back Clownfish TV Derezzed, which is going to have a focus on uh, we're going to roll the paranormal into all of this stuff going on in pop culture and video games and uh, technology. And I'm, I'm pretty excited I'm trying to get some, some really cool guests lined up. I should, I should reach out to, uh, to this guy. It'd be kind of fun to get him on. I think he has his own, he has his own podcast, but this is coming from niche gamer. Ken masters voice actor, Ruben Langdon says he was recast over politics. Uh, and they said, it's been some time since we learned that longtime Ken Masters voice actor Ruben Langdon was recast. At the time, neither Capcom nor Langdon commented on the decision until now. To recap, three years ago, articles from Newsweek and other commentary on Langdon's personal beliefs were taken out of context, which Langdon has now confirmed led him to being dropped as the voice of Ken Masters. So he confirmed it on Twitter. I'm sure they are uh, so thrilled about that. And uh, yeah, look, more UFO stuff. Uh, there we go. Now, I went out to the article that apparently got him canceled. And what he said was pretty milk toast, from what I can tell. Um, basically, the sin he, he committed was that he went on a uh, podcast with Yellow Flash and Hirohe. And I know both of those guys, but I didn't know that they had him on. Now, this was like, again, this was like three or four years ago. 
And contrary to popular belief, everybody thinks that we all hang out together all the time. That actually is not the case. Like I said, I, I know Yellow Flash and Hero Hay somewhat. Um, I've been, I think I was on Flash's stream once, maybe Hero Hayes once during the Vic Mignogna situation. And uh, again, I'm still, you know, kind of on the fence about that. Um, but, uh, I think that's why Ruben got canceled. I don't think it's because of his beliefs per se. I think it's because he dared go on this, this, uh, YouTube show with these YouTubers that a lot of people working in the industry, the gaming industries and the anime industries, they don't like these people. They don't like people like us. Now things have changed, right? Uh, it seems like these people don't have the power to cancel like they did before. And again, I think if this had happened current year, I don't think there would be any issue, but because it happened a couple of years ago and that was peak cancel culture time, he got canceled. They said, yeah, this interview includes, uh, or included hero. Hey, and yellow flash two YouTubers who made videos brigading against Twitter warriors this is according to Newsweek. Star Wars and the Vic Mignogna accusations. They brought Langdon onto a live stream and he decided to share his feelings on the Black Lives Matter and Me Too movements. The Me Too and BLM movement are never going to end. It's just going to be constantly throwing people under the bus. And it just creates more conflict than what we've already been through. That doesn't sound like a hot take to me. It's just like this stuff just keeps creating more and more conflict. And it doesn't really solve anything. Um, this is what he said. He said, we need to start telling ourselves a new story and move forward in a new way. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. It doesn't strike me as being racist or anything. Uh, during the interview, Flash brings up uh, Vic Mignogna and asks Langdon how he feels about the situation. Again, this is a very mild take. He said he starts off by saying he doesn't know much about the Mignogna situation, but then continues to share his feelings on the subject. Vic, Vic is a very touchy-feely guy. Yes, that is true. And I've seen him interact with women in that way. That is also true. Uh, we used to do conventions. He was at a convention we were at. I didn't spend any time with him, but uh, you know, everybody knows that Vic likes to hug people, right? Um, they just they just do. But uh, anyway, Langdon said, I've also seen women say no thanks, and he respects that and says thank you very much. A lot of people just need to learn to stand up and say if they don't feel comfortable with somebody, stand up and say no thank you and move on. I have a hard time believing Vic would go further than a hug in any of these cases. And, and to this day, I mean, we're talking like four years after the fact. I have not seen proof that Vic Mignogna assaulted anybody. I haven't seen it. Uh, I saw fabricated evidence from Anime News Network that, you know, they, they used uh, photos that were taken consensually with his fans to paint him as being some kind of a monster. But basically... Uh, his coworkers had an ax to grind with him at Funimation and they wanted him gone. And this is right after the Broly movie did so well and he was getting more and more attention. And uh, he was already one of the top voice actors, I think, in, in the business. And they couldn't stand it. They couldn't stand it. So they just started digging this stuff up again, you know? Um, yeah, so, you know, he goes on about Trump and he goes on about UFOs. And really there's there's nothing here. I don't think that could really cancel him. Now they said that, uh, he said, he didn't say this Newsweek said this. They said he's a firm believer in QAnon, the conspiracy theory that believes there's a deep state government being run without the public's knowledge. Is that actually QAnon? I thought it had something to do with like pizza parlors and like drinking children's blood or some crazy shit like that. Like, I don't even know what, I don't even know what QAnon is. Do I think there's a shadow government? Yeah, it's possible. I think if we're dealing with UFOs and extraterrestrials. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility at all. In fact, it's totally logical to believe that there is a government above the government that deals with this stuff and that the government's compartmentalized. And I can tell you as somebody who worked for a company that was contracted, well, was actually owned by a senator and we did primarily government work, there is a lot of compartmentalization going on. And I won't go into details in this episode on Clownfish TV as to some of the stuff I've overheard. But let's just say that was enough to kind of put me in the camp of like, yeah, I think there's something going on. I think there's definitely something going on in regards to uh, UFOs and uh, alien technology and that sort of thing. And I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at that. You'll have to subscribe to DRESD. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that sometime. So anyway, that's what got him canceled. And he said, yeah, he said the Newsweek article came out. It was basically uh, taking things I said in the interview out of context or with no context and just saying Ruben said this about uh, BLM and Me Too and I'm a right-wing extremist, I'm a UFO alien believer, crazy nutcase. Yeah, that's what they do. 
That's exactly what they do. And this is how people get canceled. They, they clip one thing and the media runs with it. And the next thing you know, you're getting phone calls and you're out of work. You know, you're, you're, you're having your convention appearances canceled. They did it to Gina Carano. They did it to Vic Mignogna. They've done it to multiple comic book people. But again, I think it's changing now. I think people ha are starting to see through the bullshit and they're starting to see that people like uh, Taylor Lorenz, who's this journalist, that, the activist journalist, that, that she, she is a bad faith actor. These people are bad faith actors. They go out of their way looking for outrage to attack people they view as political adversaries. Uh, and in some cases, it's just petty ass jealousy. In the case of Vic Mignogna, I think it was just petty ass jealousy. I think his coworkers at Funimation were incredibly uh, jealous of him. So they went out of their way to try to destroy him, thinking it was going to make more work for them. And surprise, surprise, Funimation's no more. And it looks like more and more of this uh, dubbing work is going to be outsourced to AI. So nobody wins. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, he said he noted two months earlier, Newsweek did a positive article, an interview with him and his coverage of the possibility of extraterrestrial life, which is confusing when compared to their other posts taking comments out of context. That's not confusing at all. Basically, he dared go on these uh, YouTubers show during peak cancel culture, and they took things that he said out of context. I mean, if you go on a show like that, Somebody that the media, the mainstream media doesn't like, even if you don't agree with the, the show host, they, they consider you just as bad as, you know what I'm saying? Like you could sit in a chat and this has happened before you sit in a chat and they bring like Alex Jones in or something. They're going to say, well, you agree with everything that Alex Jones believes, you know, you were supposed to call him a Nazi and a bigot and rage quit and whatever, you know, you can't even breathe the same air. You're supposed to be like a Dr. Ken do you remember that on uh, The Masked Singer, right? Dr. Ken, they brought out, I think it was Rudy Giuliani, and he like rage quit and stormed out because <laughs> they brought Rudy Giuliani out. And he's like, how could they? Uh, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to let people know that you don't agree with these people and have a hissy fit, a hissy shit fit. Uh, so yeah, he said some people wrote to Capcom, particularly the Street Fighter series producer, uh, Ono-san. He saw it and I guess he lost his shit. He didn't understand the nuance and didn't bother to reach out to me to ask what the hell's going on. He got super scared and actually called. I remember this very clearly because this was a few days before E3 started. My partner calls me and he goes, Ruben, what the fuck did you do? And I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't do anything. You don't realize how much damage you've done. You've just lost us the Street Fighter gig, he said, because of that Newsweek article, We the Company, Just Cause Productions, that was no longer a part of, actually lost a multi-million dollar gig because Ono, in a sense, thought that I was still part of the company, which I wasn't, didn't do any research, any homework, didn't look into it or even bother to have a conversation. This is Again, this is how cancel culture works. It basically depends on people being asleep at the wheel. I think people are starting to wake up and they're starting to realize that, you know, somebody comes to you with concerns, quote unquote, it doesn't mean they're legitimate concerns. Uh, sometimes they're just worm tongues looking for trouble and they're looking to, to stir shit up. Uh, I tried to arrange a meeting so I could sit down with Onosan and explain what happened, that this was all taken out of context. Uh, this was not the case. It was a hit piece from this Newsweek guy, but Onosan wouldn't have it. He wouldn't even take a meeting. It was crazy. That sucks. That really sucks. Yeah, sometimes they're just like, well, you're just a voice actor and we can replace you and and it's not worth looking into. We just rather, you know, get rid of you and and deal with it later. And a lot of companies do that. They're cowards. You know, they don't want to go to bat for somebody, um, especially if they don't view them as being terribly valuable. They're like, well, it's just a voice actor. We'll just get rid of them and, you know, whatever. And same with Vic Mignogna. It was like, oh, we can find another Broly. No big deal. Get rid of them. It's easier to just get rid of them. Um yeah, so he wanted to confirm that despite being recast in Street Fighter, he's still playing Dante in Devil May Cry. So that's what's weird. This is Capcom, but he said, again, this is like Disney. We try telling people it's like it's a very compartmentalized company. Just because Pixar doesn't want to work with Tim Allen doesn't mean that Disney proper or some other division of Disney will no longer work with Tim Allen. Actually, Gina Carano, in the case of Gina Carano, even if Lucasfilm didn't want to work with her, she should have, I might, I'm not going to tell her what to do, but my personal opinion would have been like, you should have just hung it. Yeah. Just waited it out or went to some other division at Disney and been like, well, fine. Lucasfilm doesn't want to work with me. I'll just, I'll just voice a princess or something on the you know proper Disney. I mean, who knows? Um, again, you know, Tim Allen, people said that they thought he was canceled from Lightyear because he was a vocal Trump supporter, but they gave him a whole series on, Disney plus, but again, that was Disney, Disney proper or the people behind the Disney plus shows versus 
Pixar. And, you know, so there's a difference there. And it's, apparently it's this way at Capcom too. So a few months after that, the uh, Devil May Cry director calls up and says, hey, Ruben, can you come back to Japan and do motion capture? Uh, we're going to do a special edition of Devil May Cry 5. So I went back and I asked, uh, I asked them, my partner too, what's the deal? How come you guys didn't flip out over Ruben's Newsweek article? And they were like, yeah, we just looked into it and it was fine. It's bullshit. Yeah, they looked into it. And that's the thing. All people have to do is look into this. Look into it. So many people could have been spared so much pain, so much drama. And a lot of times it goes away. I mean, I, I keep thinking back to limited run games and uh, what happened with Carol Lynn. And they fired their community manager at limited run games simply because she said she was excited about Hogwarts Legacy. You know, the best-selling game of 2023. They fired her because one person with a history of harassing people online. It was the founder. It was a what, purple tinker, the founder of BronyCon. One person had a shit fit and caused a non-traversy and they buckled. If they had just been like, yeah, whatever. We don't give a, we don't give a shit what you think. You know, if when she kills somebody or she rapes somebody, call us. You know, when she does something illegal, call us. When she says some actual bigoted things, you call us. Same with this guy. When he says some actual bigoted things, or he says some actual racist things, or he says some stuff that's, you know, going to cost us obviously millions of dollars because it's just, you know, whatever, call us. I don't think in this day and age, if the UFO thing was an issue, everybody's talking about it. Mainstream media is talking about it, right? They've got multiple shows on the History Channel. Like, it's not weird to believe in extraterrestrials. In fact, it's weird to believe, I think, in this day and age that we've got this massive, massive universe that we barely understand and we're the only sentient beings uh, in the universe. That's a bigger stretch to me, you know, than, than believing that there are aliens out there or interdimensional beings or whatever it is. You know, we, we understand so little. Uh, so anyway, I think cancel culture is going to get reversed. Do I think he's going to come back and play Ken? I, I don't know. Would he want to? Would you want to if they did that to you? I wouldn't. I'd just be like, well, fuck you. <laughs> you believe the worst things about me. Piss off. But there we go, guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe again. Check out the podcasts on uh, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon. Uh, be on the lookout for new episodes of DRES. I'm lining up some guests currently. Uh, looking forward to this one. And uh, we'll talk later. <laughs>